dance for joy alone. Welcome to a not very sensible second hand review. So this series where we don't look at cars that are sensible and practical and that you can buy for a budget between one and five thousand pounds. Instead we look at Larry ridiculous and utterly crazy cars that you can still buy for a sensible budget between one and five thousand pounds. This is the 2011 Vauxhall Corsa 1.6 VXR Nurburgring Edition. Is it any good? Should you care? Right, well, let's find out, shall we? So this generation of Corsa was introduced in 2006. It was actually based on the same platform as so the Fiat Grande Punto that we had on No Budget Reviews quite recently. And indeed, a lot of these uh, Corsa Ds, as the way that they're normally referred to, um, are available now for No Budget Reviews money. If you want a VXR or a VXR Nurburgring edition, you're going to have to spend a little bit more than a thousand pounds. And hence, uh, in this one today. The basic engine in one of these was a one litre family zero engine and in fact all of the engines from one, one litre to um, 1.4 are family zero units. They date back to 1996. The most basic engine had 59 horsepower when the uh, Corsa D was launched in 2006. That was later increased to 64 horsepower when the car was faced towards the end of 2010. There was also a 1.2 version of that engine which initially developed 79 horsepower and then later 84 horsepower. Again, with that face that came in in 2010. Then there was a uh, 1.4 version of that engine. First of all, developed the 89 horsepower and then 99 horsepower when the face of the came in 2010. Later in 2012, there was a 118 turbocharged version of that engine that came out. I think it had soft start as well. Then we get on to the really kind of crazy stuff. The VXR that came in in 2007, or the OPC if you're talking about the open version, had 192 horsepower from its uh, 1.6 litre Family 1 engine. There was also a lesser power version of that, either in the SRI or GSI, there seem to be conflicting sources about that, uh, 148 horsepower. And then when this um, Nürburgring edition, the VXR, came in in 2011, it developed 207 horsepower. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. anyone who gives me a car for review, please get rid of the air freshener before you add it over to me, because it will cause me much distress if I have to play with it. I haven't broken it one of those. So what's this crazy Nürburgring edition thing like to drop? Well, we'll just drop it again, we're on the A272, just in Winchester, this is the western end of the A272, and uh, going about 60. I was told this car was an absolute animal and that you know, the suspension was really, really firm and, you know, sort of bump and clatter and all this sort of thing. But to be honest, it's actually not that bad. It's actually reasonably refined. This Nürburgring edition has even lower and firmer suspension than the standard VXR. And so it's significantly firmer than the standard Corsa Ds. But I sort of found it okay. Now that might be because 
one of the first cars we had at the start of the channel in 2018 was an MG3 and those are completely notorious for very firm suspension. 0-16 this car takes about 6.8 seconds, I think it's a 62 figure and the top speed is about 143 miles an hour. Just kind of shifting through the gears here, I can well believe it, I'm not a particularly fast driver, I mean you can see that I am wearing a corduroy jacket and a very tatty old shirt, so you can imagine that I'm not the sort of person who pushes a car like this very much, but I do own a, a 237 horsepower front wheel drive Volvo C70 T5, so I mean I'm, I am used to powerful front wheel drive cars. I thought this would have a horrific torque steering. It would be really difficult to drive, but it's actually fine. It must be something to do with the sophisticated traction control system this car has. Amazingly, this car has a mechanical limited slip differential, which is just amazing. You would have thought that. I think there are very few front wheel drive cars of this type on the market that you can buy with a mechanical limited slip differential. It's also got a special Remus exhaust at the back. Uh, we'll take a little bit more of a look at that later. But yeah, it's, it's actually quite refined and easy to drive. I'm surprised. Well, viewers, I apologise for the uh, wind noise. Other than that, we've actually got very good um, conditions at this time of year. It's not too cold, and uh, we're in a nice, quiet area here. Certainly, this is the most extrovert Corsa I could possibly ever imagine. They don't actually have an equivalent uh, today of this type of really, really crazy hot hatch Corsa. The nearest thing you're going to get is the uh, Corsa E, the electric version, which has about 136 horsepower. This has 207 horsepower. It's, uh, yeah, it's as if, you know, someone's ticked all the aftermarket um, options for one of these, although this I think is standard on the outside. I don't think there's anything that's actually aftermarket on the outside of this uh, VXR Nürburgring edition. It's got twin rear exhausts, uh, has got a reversing camera, it's probably quite handy. That works quite well actually, it's not the standard one, that's, um, that's been fitted later. This spoiler is absolutely crazy. The only thing I can sort of liken this to is the um, Mini uh, John Cooper Works GP2 that I drove in 2021 that had even more power than this, that had 306 horsepower. So in comparison this is quite mild, but you can't buy one of those for sort of £5,000 or so. Um, this was about £6,000 um, when Tony, who owns this car, bought it a few months ago. I think the colour suits the car, you can get others as well, there's a sort of bright green that you can get and a sort of graphite colour and a, and a white one, but I think this does suit the car quite well. It looks much redder on camera than it is in real life, it's more like an orange colour. One of the things I've been told is that the door locks are really weird on this car, and so do not, do not put the keys in the car and close the door, just keep it in my pocket, which is what I'm going to do. See the little Nürburgring edition thing there? You can tell this is one of the higher specification courses anyway because it has illuminated electric window switches. And we have here the uh, Nürburgring Edition kick plate. Got some VXR mats in here which is very nice. See if the glove box is still attached because it's a problem with these Corsa Ds. It is a bit flimsy this but I think actually this is okay although I'm not sure my secret mission documents are going to go in there, viewers. They might do. And there's the shark. What's his name? Is it, is it Jeff or something like that? Jeff the shark. No. 
Um, your mission documents are not going to go in here, viewers. I don't... No, absolutely not. That's no good, is it? Yeah, they are very flimsy, these subplot slips on these Corsa Ds. So let's put it in there. So very, very big doors on this. I mean, it is hard touch on top of here, but it's not too bad, actually. I mean, this car was pretty expensive when it was new. One of the things that people said about it when it came out in 2011 was just how expensive it was in comparison with a normal VXR. Uh, obviously, the VXR didn't have things like a mechanical limited slip differential and didn't have as much power as this. It's about 192 horsepower as opposed to this, which is 207. Um, but obviously, you could save your money and buy one of those instead. One of the things that I'm really surprised about with this car, and it's the same on the driver's side, is the seats are falling apart. And it's, it's just worse on the driver's side. Um, apparently, that's really normal for these. <laughs> Don't know why. Actually, well, whilst we uh, on our way around, let's open the boot up. This kind of electrical boot release thing is, uh, gosh, it's um, really common in a lot of these sort of era of General Motors products, but both Chevys and Vauxhalls. So, 285 litres of boot space. You can see we've got all kinds of exciting stuff in here. Um, I'm not going to see if there's a, a spare under there. I'm just going to leave that. Got these compartments either side. That looks like it's supposed to be for a. Uh, First aid kit, although I'm not going to get this out with one hand, I don't know. Um, no, we'll just leave that then. A boot light somewhere. Must have one, surely. It can't not have a boot light. Weird, I can't I can't see one, dears. Maybe it's somewhere else. Strange. I suppose it does have one. Rear bumper, of course, is uh, is unique to this model. Um, as of these enormous 18 inch alloy wheels. I'm afraid there's a, a dog in the background view, so he's not very keen that I'm here, but uh, I'm not really bothering him, so I'll continue. Funny little sort of things around the side repeaters here. And then we've got these crazy mirrors. So a lot of the things have been changed on this. I can't remember if these wind deflectors are standard, I imagine they're not. Oh, yeah, the car has locked itself. <laughs> what a surprise. Hold on a second, viewers. Right, I was forewarned about that. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with here. Also, I don't know what's going on with this. Look at this, viewers. Dear, oh dear me. Apparently, that's just what happens to them. Strange, right? If we pull this, can we move the seat? Ooh. It's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Is, is that all you get to try to get in the back? Is that it? <sighs> That's no good, is it? I mean, it, the seats look reasonably nice. The, the, the uh, seat position is quite comfortable in this car, but the fact that um, it's all falling apart and that you just can't just put that forward to get in the back is a bit rubbish. I'm going to have to move that manually, aren't I, viewers? Okay, so I've moved that forward manually a bit. And that's as much as it goes. This is going to be awful, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Oh dear. Um, I mean, once you're actually in, it's not too bad. It's very dark in here, but you'd expect that with one of these. Not really much to say about the trim in the back. I mean. There's no rear armrest. I mean, the seats have got nice fabric on them and stuff. I think it's leather. Um, there's not really much else to say other than that, you know, you can see it's just all falling apart. Tony apparently has tried gluing that back together, but doesn't seem to be very uh, su successful in doing it. It's a very, very peculiar set of affairs, isn't it? Right, let's uh, keep the key in my pocket and um, get out of here. Okay, right, we put the seat back to where we need it. Key is here where I can see it. Nice six speed gearbox in this. The throw's a little bit long, but it's not too bad. Car's done about 70,000 miles. The stereo has come on without me even actually turning the ignition on. It showed the Opel symbol there. Obviously, this is effectively an Opel developed in Germany and made in Germany, actually. Germany and Spain, where these were made. I've got um, 
tire pressure monitoring, I think that would be there. Um, you can turn the traction control off if you want, but I'm not that sort of person, I'm not that crazy. And uh, that's the door locking button. Standard Corsa D heater controls, that one will light up in the night. Air conditioning, that is the uh, rear heated window. Got a top up socket down here, that I think is an aux in. Um, although, obviously this has got its own connections as well, this aftermarket unit. I think the aftermarket unit is something to do with why this car is not locking properly. Um, that might be something to do with it. Nice steering wheel, flat bottom of course, as you'd expect. Piano black bits here and there. Nürburgring edition, a little plaque there. Normal handbrake, which is excellent, we like normal handbrakes for years. No um, armrest or anything like that. I wonder if any Corsa D's got that. I don't know. I think this later car has the same um, headlight switch as the Astra J. I think the earlier ones are a slightly different one. That's a much smarter one, isn't it? The earlier ones. This looks like it would be sort of soft touch. It kind of is, this dash. Um, but it's not entirely how I'd imagine a soft touch dash to be, if that makes sense. It's not bad quality here. I mean, it's very, very standard um, circa 2010 Vauxhall. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Electric mirror switches there can be illuminated. Um, electric window switches, they show that we're in a higher spec Corsa. And a little Nürburgring special edition thing there too. Right, let's uh, switch her on, shall we, viewers? I'll have to change hands to this. Okay, so I think it's it's showing that we've got something sitting on a passenger seat, this bag, and that's why it's um, kind of flashing that second airbag symbol, which is would be that one if you want to have a child seat you want that off, don't you? So that Android head unit is loading. You can see there that actually we've got uh, you know a number of things we can look at. There's the uh, the range, average fuel consumption. See at the moment, I'm not going anywhere. As far as I understand it, you control that sort of thing from here. Let's see if that does actually work. If I if I control it from here, does that? Yes, it does. There you go. Right, we'll turn that off. Turn that right off. So yeah, it does sort of flick through. If you want to have a look at there? You got you can catch your phone via Bluetooth. That's irrelevant because it's an aftermarket system. Um, annoyingly. It, because it's a Corsa D, you don't get an engine temperature gauge at all. And you have to deal with these incredibly annoying one-touch indicator and wiper stalk. Stop it! Stop it! Ah! Viewers. Yeah. Why the Astra H and the Corsa D have these, I don't know. Um, the Insignia doesn't have them. Uh, the Corsa E doesn't have them. Actually, the Vectris, I think the Vectris C has them as well. It's a terrible idea. Um, BMW sort of E90 series and any 91s had them too. It's a terrible idea. Anyway, let's have a look under the bonnet and see what beast lies beneath. Something I've been wondering about is the bonnet vents. And here we have a contemporary... Nürburgring edition brochure, which is dated from June 2011, so about six months before this car was registered. Um, you can see there's no bonnet vents. The bonnet vents here have been cut out and put in by someone else. I can't say that's my favourite thing to do, viewers. Um, yeah. Maybe the same person who fiddled with uh, the stereo and made the central locking not work properly. So there we go. Yes, this car has actually had a new cam belt. Um, it's a Family One engine. This. The Family One was a very, very long-lived General Motors engine. It started, I think, in the original uh, Mark One Astra or um, Opel Cadet back in 1980, I think it was. And I have driven um, a Mark One Astra with that engine. By the time this car was made in 2011, the Family One was very, very 
heavily modified. It, it's virtually unrecognisable, really. Uh, variations of this engine for our market were made until about I think, 2017, 2018. By this stage, for 1.6, 1.8 litres, this is a turbocharged version of that. My 2011 Chevy Cruze also had a non-turbo version of this engine with 122 horsepower, but this has 207. One thing you must watch with these is uh, thermostat housings. Once that goes, the car will just dump its coolant everywhere, and that's not much fun. Another thing to watch with them is, uh, well, uh, how do I put this? The water pump is the tensioner for the cam belt. So you want to make sure when you do your timing belt, and I'm glad that uh, Tony has done this, a timing belt in here, that the water pump is also replaced at the same time. If you don't do that, then it can cause head gasket failure, which is not much fun at all. Right, I think it's time to go for another drive, viewers. seats so they're quite thin and we would have seen earlier on that they kind of are going to fall apart which isn't the best really but actually they seem to be kind of holding me in place just going along with sort of 16 the steering weight is very good a little bit jiggly in terms of the ride I mean this is a relatively smooth road so it's not really testing the car too much in that particular way but it's okay there's lots and lots of torque in the engine I think this has the same overboost function as the standard VXR to be able to actually just have a little bit more of a torque but you know I'm not the sort of person who particularly needs something like that it's nice to know it's there. Typical of Vauxhalls of the era, the Corsa D had an enormous number of trim levels and a lot of them sort of overlapped as well. So we have the Active, the Active Plus, the Black Edition, the Breeze, the Breeze Plus, the Club, the Design, the Design in Touch, the Energy, Excite, Exclusive without the second E for some reason, the Expression, the Life, the limited edition the s which is the base model uh, the se the sri the sting the sxi the sxi in touch the gsi and the vxr and vxr nurburgring edition so viewers should you consider a corsa vxr as a not very sensible second-hand car well if you can find one that hasn't had things altered on it like the bonnet vents cut out and this crazy stereo put in which has messed up the central locking system then I don't see why not you do need to watch that someone hasn't absolutely thrashed the card of an inch of its life you know a nice little sticker like this has to say the cam belt just been done is is quite handy and, uh, you know, these wheels are going to get curbed. These wheels are curbed. Uh, the ride's a little bit hard. The car does have electrical faults. And you do even get rust on these, actually, now. Because they're, uh, you know, over 15 years old, actually, the oldest ones of these courses are. Um, so just buy, buy carefully. But if this is the sort of thing that you're into, and I suspect a lot of you are, then you might really enjoy it. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of uh, Not Very sensible second-hand reviews please don't forget to subscribe to the channel like this video leave a comment below and we shall see you again soon for more mm, less than rational motoring